Hi, I'm Peter. And my name is Aaron. So Aaron, I have a problem for us today. Okay. Because I was just playing with some dominoes and I noticed this interesting thing about their box. Okay. And that is that I can fit a domino directly into the box and you can see how it lines up nice and flat with the inside of the box. And so my question is, if I have seven dominoes and I can put them in just the regular way, right? But how many different ways can I put the dominoes in a box? Okay, so Peter, this particular box, mm -hmm. since dominoes are split into two squares, right. this particular box would be two squares high, and then it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares across right. in length. So, so the box would be two by seven. Okay, so if we're going to look at other types of boxes as well, are there certain dimensions that you want to look at? Um, I think for my boxes that they're always going to be only one domino tall. Okay, so, so they're two always squares tall. Two. Gotcha. But because we don't know how long the box is, because I want to take this on mathematically, mm -hmm. that we're going to call how long it is L. Perfect. So why don't I write that down letter. for us? So if L equals the length, okay. why don't we call N the number of combinations for okay. our tilings? Because that's what we're trying to figure out. Yes. All right. So then I think for me, I might want to start because I'm trying to chart the number of ways that we should start with a t-chart. Okay, so why don't I draw that out for us? Okay. We'll have our L on this side and our N on this side here. So what L would you like to start with? I think I'd like to start with zero. Okay, so you're saying we have a group of dominoes that's zero length long? Yeah, so what I'm saying is I have a box that doesn't exist. Okay. And how many ways can I fit dominoes into my non-existent box? I would say there would be one way, and that way is that you can't. That is exactly right. Okay, so I'll add one to our n over here. So that's kind of an abstract example. Mm -hmm. Why don't we move on to when our length is just one? Okay, so when our length is one, we're going to have two by one. Mm-hmm. And as you can see, there's still one way to put a domino in that box. Okay, so I'm going to add one for our n there. Okay. And then let's look at a length of two. All right, so let's make a prediction. How many ways do you think there are going to be with two dominoes? Hmm, if I'm looking at our pattern on the chart, it's one and one, I would be tempted to say one again. All right, well, let's try. So we have two dominoes. Okay, so I can bring them together this way, which is one. All but right. looking at the dominoes in front of me, I can see that I can also move them this way. All right, so there's two ways then yes. to put two dominoes in a two by two box. Yes, so now I'd like to look at a length of three. So can you pass us another domino? All right, there's a third domino. So since it always has to be two, I'm going to do one here. Okay. Now, Peter, if I move it to this side, does that count as a new combination? It does. All right, so that will be two. And then the last combination that I can see is like so. With All three. right. So that would be three different combinations for a length of three. So would you like okay. to try four? I would, but first I would like to guess at the pattern. Okay. So I think because we said one, one, two, three, that with four dominoes, I'm going to guess four. Okay. Because it looks like it's moving in a line. As you said, zero is an abstract example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to bring in a fourth domino here. And so right now we have one way, which is all stacked up this way. Mm -hmm. And then it's like when we had two, so I can flip them over like this, and we can do a second way like that. Okay, so that's two. All right, and then what if I did half and half? So I have a third way. Okay. And then I have a fourth way. Mm -hmm. And here's the tricky bit. I think I can do five by splitting the difference. Oh, interesting. So in total, we had five different ways. Right. Okay. So I was wrong with my guess. Hmm, I wonder why that is. So we have one, two, three, five. Let's make a prediction then for our length of five. What do you think that okay. could be? So because this pattern is making no sense to me, and it started skipping by two last time, mm -hmm. I'm going to skip by two again. I'm going to guess seven. Okay, so let's add one more domino and see how that turns out. All right, so we'll add another domino and we'll start 
with them all standing up so we can see that our L is five. Okay, so that's one combination. Okay, and then I'm going to flip these two here. So that's another one. So it's two. Right, and then I can put these two sideways as well. That's three. What about this? Four. And what about this? That'd be five. And then what about this? That would be six. And that? Seven. And is there any more that you can see? Hmm. Because I'm right right now with seven, and I'm not used to being right. So we should check. And I think that that's eight. Okay, so that was eight combinations. So your prediction, unfortunately, was wrong, mm. and now we went up by three to get eight. So I'm thinking, let's look at one more example using our dominoes, and let's try and do six. All right, so I'll grab another domino here. Okay. So something I'm noticing is that sometimes in math, we can break our problems down into smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. And so with six, I know that I can break that down into, say, three groups of two, mm -hmm. right? So I can extend this a little bit here, and we can have three groups of two here. And I don't know if this will be a great way, but it's at least a way that feels comfortable to me. Okay. Okay, so I know with two that there are two ways to do that, right? So there's standing up and there's lying down. Okay, so that's and one. So that's one, and this is two. Hmm. And we remember that this would be three. Yeah. Okay. And then this will be four. And five. Okay. All right. And now things are going to get a little bit complicated. So, this is now six. Mm -hmm. And seven. Eight. And nine. And then if I turn these two sideways, that then this is 10. Yeah. And 11, right? Mm -hmm. And 12. And 13. Okay, can you see any other ways? I think that's it. All right, so I'm going to add 13 our list here. So Peter, so far our pattern has been 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. And I'm a little bit confused as to how we could maybe find out a higher length that would be difficult to show using dominoes. Say if we had a length of maybe like 15 or 20 or something like that. Mm. I think that I have actually spotted the pattern. Okay. It was by looking at 5. And so I saw that 5 is equal to 3 plus 2. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at three and I said three is equal to two plus one. Mm -hmm. And two is equal to one plus one. And 13 is eight plus five. Mm -hmm. And eight is five plus three. So I think what's going on is to get the number we're looking for, we need to add the previous two together. Okay. And so when that happens, and specifically when we start at one, that that is called the Fibonacci sequence. So Peter, just to clarify, the Fibonacci sequence is any sequence that begins with one and one, and then any term can be found by finding the sum of the two previous terms in the sequence. Right. Okay. So there's a way to visually prove that this is what's going on, and so I want to try it with seven dominoes. Okay. So I'm going to bring over our seventh domino here. And so now we have a two by seven box, just like we did at the start. And I think that because our last term with six, we had 13 combinations. And our term before that with five, we had eight combinations. That with seven dominoes, we should get 21 combinations because 13 plus eight is 21. Right, and since we're looking at the seventh term, we're finding the sum of the fifth and the sixth term, which is eight right. and 13. So we can show that actually using the dominoes. Okay. And so if I separate out one, this is now L minus one. Okay. Right? And if I separate out two, this is now L minus two. Mm -hmm. And so you can see here we have five dominoes and we've broken this down into a piece of work that we've already done. 
Right. And with six dominoes, we've also broken this down into a piece of work that we've already done. Correct. And because it's an and, right? So because it, we can do it like this and arrange our combinations like that, but also we can do it like this and arrange our combinations with these two, mm -hmm. that we add them together. Okay. So how we write that is a little interesting. And if I could borrow your pen and paper there, sure. I'd, I'd like to write down a little bit. So what we can say is a term in a sequence starts with a capital T, and we call it T of L. So that's how that looks. OK. And so N is the number of combinations we have. So N is equal to T of L. All right? And then what goes on is T of L is equal to T of L minus 1, which we saw with the dominoes. Right. And we add T of L minus 2. Right, because this is the term that is 1 less, and this is the term that is 2 less. Right. So with the Fibonacci sequence, we actually write it a little differently than what we've been doing so far. And we've been using the L because it's over here in our chart. Mm -hmm. So with the Fibonacci sequence, there is a special way to write it, and it starts with F for Fibonacci. And then we're going to call that F of M. And M is just the term in the sequence. So if we were looking for the fourth term, we'd say that M is equal to 4. OK. And so we say that F of M is equal to F of M minus 1, right? So your term before, plus f of m minus 2. And you remember when we started that we had some initial conditions, right? Mm -hmm. So we put a comma there, and we say that f of 0 is equal to 1, and f of 1 is equal to 1. And then we do have some things to say about m as well. OK. Right? So we then have to say that m is greater than or equal to 2, and m is an element of the natural numbers. OK, and then our natural numbers are just our counting numbers. There's not any decimals or anything like that, right? right? And they also don't have 0. Right. And that is the Fibonacci sequence. Perfect. And so using this formula, we can determine how many ways there are to stack dominoes on a horizontal surface, however long it is. Perfect. Well, I'm happy we were able to solve your problem. Yeah, thanks for your help. No problem.